Did you know that one of the most commonly used drugs for um, inducing labor, just at the start of inducing labor, has an FDA warning for its risks for use in labor and delivery. It is not FDA approved for labor and delivery. And there is risks of uterine tearing, severe bleeding, death for mother and baby. And this is one of the most commonly used drugs. It's called psych- Psychotech or mis- Misprostol. That sounds real scary. So let's talk about Cytotech or Misoprostol for induction of labor. But before I do, I wanna tell you a story. I'm gonna tell you the story that I had one time in room four. Um, she was 37 weeks pregnant with her first baby and she had severe preeclampsia. Her body was not yet ready to go into labor, but this baby needed to come out. Her cervix was closed, meaning looked a lot like this hard, thick, closed cervix. And we talked about a plan to induce her, which included a medicine called Cytotec, which can take your hard, closed cervix and make it softer and thinner so that your body can go into labor and dilate. She went to Instagram to find some more information about Cytotec and found a video from a doula that was saying the exact same things that were in this video and said absolutely no Cytotec. Well, in my hospital, that is the cervical ripening drug that we use. So our only other way of inducing her was Pitocin, which also has the same risk factors as Cytotec. But because her cervix was hard and thick and we couldn't even get a Foley balloon in here to help her to, to dilate, she ended up having a C-section. And I think about her and wonder if now that she has maybe more kids, if she's had to have continued C-sections because of that first one. And if we were able to get her cervix nice and ripe before we started Pitocin, if that would have changed her outcome. That is why when we come on the internet, we talk about things. We not only have to have basic knowledge, but we also have to have history, context, and experience to be able to put all those things together. So let's talk about the history of Cytotec and the FDA warning. So when Cytotec first came out back in 1985, it was used for gastric ulcers. You ever heard the story about how Viagra got its start, that it started out as a medicine used for high blood pressure, and then all these middle-aged men who were taking this high blood pressure medicine, all of a sudden their hangle dangles weren't so hangle or dangly? Well, kind of the same thing. They gave it to pregnant people, like, oh my God, everybody's going into labor. And they found that if it's used in early pregnancy, you can have birth defects or your baby comes out. Almost all medicines that we use on labor and delivery are going to be used off-label because you're going to be hard-pressed to find any drug company that is willing to test and manufacture and market medicines for the labor and delivery process because it is so litigious. And doing drug trials on pregnant people would be unethical, which is how you end up with everything being used off-label. So Cytotec is similar to a medicine called Cervidil. They're both cervical ripeners and they're both prostaglandins. Cytotec is a pill that can be used orally or vaginally, and Cervidil is like an insert that can go inside kind of like a tampon. They have very similar risk factors. But in my hospital, we don't use Cervidil, we only use Cytotec. So this conversation is only going to be about Cytotec. So let's go to the FDA warning label and talk about it. We don't need to give it to people who are pregnant because it can cause birth defects, which I spoke about in the beginning, abortion because it puts you into labor, premature birth because it puts you into labor, or uterine rupture. Now that's the scary one. And if you look here, that risk increases when you have people who are more at risk for uterine rupture, which is why you have to be an appropriate candidate to even receive Cytotec. And if you've had a previous C-section before, you would never get Cytotec. But given at appropriate doses to the appropriate patients, it can be a safe and effective way to induce labor. But the good thing is we got lots and lots of evidence that we can go to and find out the real deal about it. But it is so studied safe and effective that misoprostol is on the essential medicines list for the World Health Organization for use during pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum care. Pregnancy, because it is a safe and effective way to induce an abortion childbirth because it's a safe and effective way to induce labor, and postpartum care because it is a safe and effective way to treat a maternal hemorrhage. I'm a birth doula and I have seen a lot. I've had my own experiences. I was given psychotech for my induction. I did hemorrhage. I don't know if it was related. Um, I watched a mother get psychotech for her induction. She hemorrhaged. When you've seen enough women hemorrhage, it's not easy. Um, and I am so sorry that that happened. And I can see how you could definitely correlate those things in your mind. So 
uterine atony is usually what causes a postpartum hemorrhage. Now, uterine atony happens when you've been in labor for a long time and your uterus is like, I am done. I'm tired. My job is over and I am going to take a nap right here. A lot of the time, those hemorrhages happen after a long labor or a Pitocin that was being given for a long time and is less related to a single dose of a medicine that was given in the beginning of labor. And Cytotec is actually one of the first medicines that we would use to treat a postpartum hemorrhage. So if you were given Cytotec over and over and over and over and over during a really long labor, could that contribute to having a hemorrhage? For sure. But one or two doses during the beginning of labor, and it's usually like hours and hours and hours and hours before, less likely to be directly related to that hemorrhage. Can it be related? For sure. I'm just saying that most of the time it's more related to long labor, long Pitocin, that kind of stuff. If you have a medically necessary induction, there's other ways that don't involve Psychotec or Misprocetol. You can use a Foley catheter um, without Psychotec. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of ways. So FYI. So using Foley catheters is a great way to start that cervical ripening process. In fact, that we found uh, that when you use a Foley ca catheter in combination with misoprostol, we get way better outcomes and we are able to shorten that length of labor to decrease that risk of hemorrhage. But Foley catheters are not an option for everybody. Remember my friend from the beginning of the video that I said she said no to the Cytotec? We could not get a Foley catheter in the cervix. We needed cervical ripening before a Foley catheter could ever go in. And that's why having context and experience is so important when we're talking about these things because it, it's so easy to say like, we'll just do this instead when it's not always an option. And if we're only using a Foley catheter for cervical ripening and labor takes a really, really, really long time, we could actually be setting someone up for something like a postpartum hemorrhage if we have labor that's lasting forever. When using a low dose of Cytotec plus a Foley catheter could help us get into labor. So here's the important things to know. If your team is suggesting mesoprostol or Cytotec for your induction, you can ask them a few things. How will you monitor my baby? Most of the time you'll have that usually wireless monitor on your belly. They'll also be monitoring your contractions and how frequently they're coming. What will you do if my uterus is contracting too much? And they'll probably tell you that on labor and delivery, we keep a medicine that can help to relax your uterus if that happens. We can also give you a fluid bolus, position changes. You can talk about what a uterine rupture would feel like or look like or what they would be looking out for. And I'll tell you, I've been doing this a long time, okay? I've never seen a uterine rupture from a Cytotec. I have seen uterine ruptures from Pitocin. But that is why we hand pick who is appropriate for a cervical ripening agent like Cytotec because it's not always cut and dry. And when we remove options from our toolbox that we can use to help us have a vaginal birth, we may have way more unnecessary failure to progress C-sections. And that's not the right answer either. I want you to make your own informed and empowered decisions. Do not listen to me. Do not listen to me. I'm a lady on the internet, okay? I could be lying. I could be lying to you about all the things, okay? But you also use that same energy for everybody else, okay? Internet, <laughs> bad, okay? Go use these as good talking points to talk to your own trusted healthcare provider, okay? Stay safe out there.